Ooh, you made cookies. Oh yeah, I'm just trying out a few recipes for my Christmas Cookies for Dummies cookbook. Oh, nothing says Christmas like cookies. What is wrong with these cookies? Nothing. They're for dummies. Here you go. Would you like a little bite there? Yeah? <laughs> I got a little mustache. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We're gonna cause a stir learning this month's fur. Two. On the mouth, Solomon. Virtue of fun. Three minute edition. Hey everyone out there in video land. Thanks for tuning in to the Melv Solomon Virtuathon three minute edition. Today we've got a humdinger of a virtue, don't we Greg? I like it. Yeah you do, that Greg, so loquacious. Oh I like red loquacious, not black loquacious. No, 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 not licorice Greg, oh. loquacious. It means your verbal skills are robust. Mmm, roast beef. Okay. Today we're talking about something amazing that I am sure you've all heard of, Christmas. <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, we often celebrate Christmas with the exchanging of the gifts. <laughs> so today, Greg and I are exchanging gifts from one brother-in-law <laughs> to the other brother-in-law. <laughs> Get on up here, Greg. <laughs> Here's your gift from me to you. Oh, and from me, to you. Oh, thank open you. it, open oh, it, open yeah, it, okay. open it, open it. Oh, open it, simmer open down it, there, Greg. Oh, okay. Don't want you needing your inhaler. <laughs> oh. oh, here we go. Whoa. Is this what I think it is? Yeah. Is this what I think it is, Greg? More, more than likely. Is this what I think it is? Can we find out? My very own bedazzled bow tie! <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how did you know? Oh, you sent me a web link that said buy me this. Oh, yeah, that I did, Greg, <laughs> that I did. Okay, my turn, right. my turn. <gasps> wow! A potato chip. Yeah, I thought it was in the shape of my head. See, now you'll always have something to remember me by and the way I love you, buddy. Plus, if you get hungry, you got a snack. Thank you, Mav. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but as we know, Christmas is when... But as we know, Christmas is when the ultimate gift was exchanged. The gift of God's Son, Jesus, was given to us. Ain't that right, Greg? The greatest gift ever. That's right, my friend. So, as usual, We'll close out our time here at our Virtuathon with a little ditty from me to you. <laughs> Hit it, Greg. It doesn't matter if you live on land or if you live on an isthmus. God gave a gift to every woman and man. It was Jesus, and that's why we have Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Was that chip tasty? I'm still chewing it. Oh, oh, yeah. I named him. It's Eric Estrada. Came down from heaven up.
good. Right, right there. there. Yeah, perfect. Like right here. Huh. My side looks good. Oh, hi. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about Christmas. And putting more decorations on our tree. More tinsel? Always. Perfect. Plus, we also might show you something that might just rock your world. Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Carter. And today we're talking about, what else? Christmas. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. What's this? This is a rock. But what does a rock have to do with Christmas? Plenty. Rocks aren't exactly exciting. Didn't you ever have a pet rock? What's up, Flintstone? Well, I'm doing great. Just a great day. Awesome. I don't make a habit of talking to rocks. Well, then you're missing out. Oh, yeah? You know what they call the process of drilling through rock? Making holes in a rock? Nope. It's called boring. Boring. But rocks aren't boring. In fact, when you really think about it, rocks... Hold on, man. If you're about to say rocks rock, please don't. Listen, I get that rocks can look pretty common and ordinary, but there's more to this rock than meets the eye. And I can prove it. You're kidding. Nope. Okay then. Let's do it. Now the most important thing about this rock isn't what's on the outside, but on the inside. All right, man. So, break it down. How about you break it down? Okay. Is that really the best you can do? <laughs> you know, on the outside, it looks like a plain old rock, but it's actually a geode. You're listening to WROK, your home for classic rocks. Up next, it's Geode. Rough and bumpy on the outside, but on the inside, beautiful crystals made of minerals. Dig it. I've heard of geodes. You can find them all over the world, right? That's right. Europe, Africa, South America, and North America. But how are these fancy diamond eggs, you know, made? It all starts with volcanoes. Sometimes when lava from a volcano cools underground, pockets or bubbles form inside it. Then, over time, water seeps into these spaces and leaves behind minerals. Eventually, those minerals build up, forming these really cool crystals. They come in all sorts of shapes and colors. And all kinds of sizes, too. You got it. From small enough to hold in your hand all the way to ginormous. One of the largest geodes in the world was discovered in Ohio in 1897. That geode is more than 35 feet wide in places. You can actually walk around inside it. Some of the crystals are three feet long. Okay, you convinced me. Something can look very ordinary on the outside while something amazing is happening on the inside. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But hundreds of years before Luke, God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the whole world through them. Time after time, the Israelites turned away from God. At last, they were attacked by foreign nations. But God still had a plan. God spoke through men called prophets, promising to send a rescuer to save the people. And yet, after that, silence. For hundreds of years, there was no recorded word from God. Then, well, that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, Brian here. Many of the Israelites were carried off to foreign countries, but even as that happened, God promised not to give up on them. I know the plans I have for you. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. But after the prophets, silence. So what happened? Did God forget his promise? Not at all. In fact, as we'll see, his plan came together at just the right time. Because in the town of Nazareth lived an ordinary young woman named Mary. And one day, an angel named Gabriel visited. Greetings, Mary. 
The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Whoa. I mean, can we just pause for a moment to think about how shocked Mary must have been? I mean, boom, angel in my living room, right? And we know she must have been scared because Gabriel then said, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Gabriel went on to explain that God's plan for rescuing the people had finally begun, and Mary would play a major part in that rescue. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. Okay, so Mary had some questions. Who wouldn't? But even though she didn't fully understand everything, she replied, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. <laughs> Mary was so excited she traveled to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was also going to have a baby. And even before Mary shared the good news, Elizabeth cried out, God has blessed you more than other women. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. And Mary praised God. My soul gives glory to the Lord. He has taken note of me even though I'm not considered important. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He's done it just as he promised to our people of long ago. Even though Mary didn't know the whole story yet, she knew and trusted God. And because of that, she could have peace in the midst of something completely unexpected. The end. Wow. Can you imagine what it would have been like if social media existed back then? Yeah, I would have been all hashtag mind blown. I hear you. And yet Mary had peace because she trusted God. She may have looked ordinary on the outside, but God knew her heart was extraordinary. Hey, just like my geode. What do you mean? Well, you know, nothing special on the outside, but amazing on the inside. Ah, oh, you're right. So, what's our part in the story? Well, Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. But Jesus wasn't just a gift. He was the central part of God's big plan to rescue us. That means we can have peace because God always has a plan, even when we're scared or sad or uncertain about something. Like if you suddenly have to move to a new town in the middle of a school year. Or if a family pet dies. Or you find out that you're going to have a new baby brother or sister. No matter what happens, you can choose to give it to God because God has a plan so we can have peace. I don't know why I'm here. I couldn't have said it better myself. See you guys next time. So, here's the thing. You can have peace because God has a plan. Hey, decorating with geodes? Good call. What can I say? These rocks rock. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. That was a pretty good joke. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's but funny. you've had some good ones as well. Yeah. Kind of learned from you, you know. Yeah,
Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And we are slap dab in the middle of Christmas season. And what a glorious season it is. Yeah, it's time to celebrate Jesus' birth. Eat great food. Spend time with family. Eat more food. Spend time with friends. Did I mention food? Yes, you did. Okay, good. Just making sure. It's also a time when everyone gets extremely busy. Yeah. So making a plan and, and knowing how you're going to celebrate Christmas is important so you don't get lost in all the food. Are you hungry or something? Always. All right. During Christmas, you can get lost in everything that's going on and, and forget what's really important. Don't say it. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I was thinking it though. Of course you were. So today, we have a special guest who knows all about making plans. Oh, I didn't know we were gonna have a guest. Okay, let me guess. Can I guess? I'm gonna guess, okay? Let yeah, me guess. You can, can I guess? guess. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna guess. Okay, guess. Give me a hint. <laughs> okay, um, uh, he wears a funny hat. Um, and his clothes are, are very distinct and noticeable. Okay, that could be a football player or an astronaut. More clues, more clues. Uh, okay. He has a little helper. He, uh, oh, he, he travels the entire globe for his job. Uh, astronaut still works. Okay, another clue, another clue. All right, let's see. Oh, he has a beard. Uh, and, and his belly kind of shakes when he laughs, which is often. What? Man, I have no idea who you're... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, is, is making plans kind of like making a list? I guess so, sure. Beard, belly that shakes when he laughs, hat and very distinct clothes, he travels the world, has a little helper, and makes a list? <laughs> I think I figured it out, but there's just no way you could've, you, you couldn't have, you, could, you couldn't have. I could. Well, well, what are we waiting for? Let's do this. All right, please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> Merry Christmas! That's my name. At least that's what my mama told me. <laughs> Leonard. It is, it is me, right? It's not somebody else. I didn't turn into somebody else, did I? That'd be terrible. Unless it was that guy that drives a Simboni around at hockey games. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> no, it, it's you. Well, welcome to the show. What's wrong with him? Is he okay? It looks like he was expecting somebody else. And I know that look happens every time I walk in the gym. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's fine. We were just we were just playing a game. Can you can you tell everyone who you are and what you know? Oh yeah, <clears throat> I am Leonard Fortescue, and I am a professional metal detectorist. I travel the world using my little friend Camilla here to find anything that was lost. That can go from treasure to somebody's dentures and anything in between. <laughs> I even found a wig once. <laughs> Even though that was an accident, I thought it was a squirrel. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so Camilla is your little helper? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it without her. I mean, I guess I could like wave my hands over the ground and like make beeping sounds. Like, uh -huh. beep, 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 beep. <laughs> but uh, that wouldn't do much good, would it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you told me that you were good at making plans. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta be. Well, you know, when you're a professional metal detectorist, as I am, you, you gotta keep up with the ocean's tides, you gotta file permits and obtain permissions, because if you don't, you either end up all wet or bit by a dog. <laughs> and neither is a good way to start the morning, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't think it was. And you know, and Christmas is the worst time to be feeling overwhelmed because everyone is going in more directions than a 10-legged man at a tap dancing convention. <laughs> Which reminds me, I, I got you both gifts. Oh, yeah, yeah, here you go, that's just for you. Yep, and this one is yours. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, I know, but I did it anyway. Go ahead and open them up. Oh, they're planners. Yeah. I I know they're a bit retro, but I, I find when you actually write things down and know that there is a plan, when things go sideways, and they will, it tends to make things not be so hectic. You can almost uh, have a piece about it. My, mine's already filled in. Oh, oh yeah, actually Camilla found yours on a beach. It's from 1967 and it belonged to a guy named Robert Englewood. So you can either do two things. You can erase it all or just do what he did, which is what I suggest because he did a bunch of fun stuff. Look at here. In July, he actually went skydiving. And the calendar becomes empty after that, so you can just do whatever you want to do. <laughs> well, I guess I got to get going. I got a lot more presents to deliver. Oh. So I'll see you guys on the flop side. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas to all and to all. 
See you later. <laughs> nice to see you, Leonard. <laughs> Does Leonard remind you of someone? No. Why? I just, cause it, it, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. It's Bible story time. Hey guys, you know what Leonard said helps connect us perfectly to today's Bible story. Really? Which part? The part about how having a plan can help bring you peace. Awesome, then take it away. Today, we have the story of a girl named Mary and how she dealt with finding out about a pretty incredible plan. You can read this story yourself in the book of Luke, but hundreds and hundreds of years before Luke, God chose one family the Israelites, and promised to bless the whole world through them. Time after time, the Israelites turned away from God, but God still had a plan to send a savior, which is where our story picks up. Mary was a teenage girl living in Nazareth. She was engaged to a guy named Joseph, who was a carpenter there. Things were going pretty well for Mary. But her happiness was about to be put to the test because God had a message especially for Mary, and God sent that message through an angel. The angel's name was Gabriel, and his appearance obviously took Mary a little bit by surprise. But Gabriel told her not to be afraid. No, no, no! Gabriel said, God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. When Mary heard that, you'd probably expect she'd be like, What? <laughs> and maybe she was. But the angel told her a little of God's plan. He said, The Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the most high God will cover you. So the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. I know, mind blowing. Then Gabriel told Mary about one of her relatives, Elizabeth, and how God promised to give her a child even though she seemed too old. But Elizabeth was pregnant because what God says will always come true. So Mary said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. It's like she took a deep breath and decided to trust God and dive in. After that, Mary took off to visit her relative, Elizabeth. And when Mary got to Elizabeth's home, the baby inside of Elizabeth jumped at the sound of Mary's voice. Elizabeth knew immediately that the child Mary was carrying was the Son of God, and that he was going to be the one God sent to save the world. Mary knew it too, because she said, he has done it just as he promised to our people of long ago. Now that's a plan worth celebrating. God's plan to send a savior was in full force, and Mary knew it. And even though she didn't know what every detail of the plan would look like, she was ready to follow it. Wow, way to go, Mary. You know, it's sometimes hard for me to follow the plan for picking out clothes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> God has a plan for all of our lives. And when things get crazy, wild, and out of control, knowing God has a plan can give us peace, just like Mary had. Thanks. Yeah. Anytime. Speaking of time, it's time for me to go find some Christmas cookies. Oh. Oh, stay away from the dummy cookies. I think it's time for us to <gasps> reveal, reveal the, the question. question. What are your plans this Christmas? Hmm. Do you have any yet? Oh yeah, our family has several Christmas traditions that we plan for every year. We decorate the tree together, my father gets electrocuted every year, and we always read the Christmas story on Christmas Eve, which is one of my favorite parts of Christmas. Hmm. What about you? Uh, well, we always go to see one of those um, 
uh, oh, the living nativities. Oh yeah. You know, where they act out the Christmas story yeah. live, like with real animals. Uh -huh. That's one of the things I look forward to most every year. Love those yeah, too. You know what? So I'm fun. gonna write that down. Oh yeah, you do that. Uh -huh. I think that's all we've got for today's show. We'll see you next week for more brand new Christmas shenanigans. Uh -huh. That is October. That's right, because I want to make sure I get there early. Please Woody! Look <laughs> Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Mate, whoa, 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 hold, hold up, up. Hold up. Hold up. Stop. <laughs> Credits. Merry Christmas. Credits. That's the very. Uh. That's the very end of the credits. Yes, come on, put that at the very end, Tim.